What's up, Nail Geeks? Today I have Zoya's Jubilee collection. I am very proud to finally get this post up for you guys as I've had some technical difficulties with this post. So I am very excited to finally have it up and ready for viewing. So first up, we've got Astrid. This is described as a liquid gold foil that adds a festive touch to any holiday look. Wear it as an accent or a loan for optimum impact. So if you've been following me so far, you know that when I see polishes like this, I'm going to see if I can wear it on its own. And definitely, I personally think it's fantastic as a polish by itself. As you're seeing here on this first coat, it can definitely double as a very, very dense topper if you're wanting to put, I would say, even like a light color underneath it. I did find that it was opaque for me at two coats. I had no smile lines showing. And the foil effect to it is super shiny, very has that nice reflective appearance to it, and is very, very sparkly overall. Here I'm using a quick dry top coat, and as you're seeing, I don't have any texture whatsoever. Everything behaved nicely for me, and the formula applies very smooth upon application. I think this would be a great holiday polish for your holiday manis for this time of year and just a really not too yellow gold color. Up next we have Taryn. This is described as a fiery fuchsia micro iridescent shimmer with blue undertones, a shade that brightens even the gloomiest of winter days. And I happen to agree with this one. The formula on it does feel a touch lighter than what I'm used to seeing with Zoya polishes. However, it does build up relatively quickly. On this first coat here, it applied very, very smoothly. I had no issues with it whatsoever. The shimmers picked up very nicely on the brush as well. And there is a lovely, like luminescent, almost blue appearance on tilt and in shaded lighting. The base color is a wonderful, just vibrant fuchsia style color, very, very flattering. And I felt like at two coats, I probably could have gone to three just to give it that nice thick appearance that I usually go for. But when I was applying this one, I just felt like it looked right at two coats, especially after taking it my hand away from the light box. Next, we have Maxine. This is described as a rich red cream with an evenly balanced undertone, bright yet still appropriate for the season. Formula on this one has that lovely, very creamy finish that we have come to expect from Zoya creams. That first coat, I am going in just a little thinner than usual um, when I'm applying creams. I definitely could see if I loaded up the brush just a touch more and I had shorter nails, I could probably, I dare say, maybe get away with one coat. For those of us that have a free edge like this, I would suggest going in for that wonderful two coat look. On the second coat here, I am going in just a touch more normal to how I usually apply creams, and I had no visible smile line to be seen. This color is super interesting to me. It's almost like a like a reddish pinkish sort of color. Very interesting, and I think it's super, super flattering. Once again, smooth, buttery formula, and just very, very easy going for application. Next up, we have Allison. This is described as a plum-toned ruby cream, a more amped up version of a traditional plum shade. I absolutely fell in love with this color. I would adore seeing it in, in makeup shades as well. This is really, really flattering. I think it looked super well against my skin tone. So those of us who have medium to deep tones like this one, I highly recommend you trying it out. Formula has a really nice smooth creamy finish to it. I do feel like I probably should have gone in just a touch heavier on that first coat to, you know, prevent any patchiness. But on the second coat, it has a wonderful self-leveling feeling to it. And even going in too thin as I did here, after top coat, you can't really see it. The formula is very forgiving. And once again, that base color is just very, very flattering. It definitely does have um, a plummy tone and it's almost a reddish plummy type cream. Definitely one you want you want to see in person. Next up is Cookie. This is described as a purple pixie dust with gold flecks. Perfect for holiday fun. Use it as an accent on her own or for gorgeous textured matte look. 
So one of the polishes in my collection or type of polishes, I should say, should say in my collection is Pixie Dust. I'm a huge, huge fan of them. Now, if you are shy of texture type polishes, I will say that going over typically in my experience twice with a quick dry thick top coat will prevent you from seeing any type of texture or feeling it. Now, this one, I will say on that first coat, um, I did feel like it came off just a little bit um, on the sheer side, for lack of better words, for a pixie dust. But on the second coat, just wait for it to dry and then it builds up super, super easy. So this one is in regards to pixie dust that Zoya has put out in the past. I would say this one is a little bit on the thicker side for the formula but I had no issues whatsoever as you're seeing on this after the second coat with full coverage. Now, next we have the new Leopard Spots Topper. This is a special effect topper for winter 2018. Um, it's intended to be layered over pixie dust. And I would say if you are familiar with the old school crackle polishes, this is very reminiscent of that. Here, I wanted to show you guys the very first time I'm using it. So. Um, you're seeing me kind of troubleshooting it a little bit. And as you're seeing, it does come off just a little, little interesting regarding the formula type. I wasn't sure how it was going to apply, but I was pleasantly surprised that going in with the brush, it just, it dries down very, very quickly and it'll start crackling very soon as well. So here, like I didn't even fast forward this and you're seeing how quickly it reacted to whatever is underneath it. Now, I personally do like to wear top coat over pixie dust, so I'm going in with a quick dry top coat and just to show you guys how pretty they look, glossify. Next up is Kiara. This is described as a deep purple cream, a gorgeous complement to the rich jewel tones of the season. And once again, I'd have to agree. Formula on this one is absolutely phenomenal. I'm going in just a little bit heavy on this first coat, but this is how I always expect Zoya creams to be. They're very rich, very easy to apply, and very satisfying on the brush strokes. This is pretty much almost a one coater. You're gonna wanna go in for that second coat to kind of smooth everything out. Formula on this one is very forgiving, just like the other creams, and I feel like after the second coat, it gives you that nice, thick appearance. I had no issues whatsoever with full coverage. Everything was nice and even, and this is a very, very flattering grapey type purple. Super nice for this type of year, time of the year, and I feel like this would be, even for a dark color, it's gonna be flattering on just about anybody. In person, it's just super in your face, just a really opaque, solid tone. Next, we have one of my absolute favorites in this collection, and I'm super excited that Zoya put out a teal. This is Danica, described as a rich, deep teal cream, which is a new twist on holiday green that gives you an edgy yet elegant look. So after swatching these, I definitely wore this one for about two weeks afterwards. I adore this color. Formula feels a little bit lighter than the other creams in this collection, say, compared to something like Kiara. But after the second coat, I had just super smooth, rich, buttery looking nails, and it had that nice plump look to the overall look. This color is super, super pretty. Like I said, I'm usually pretty biased when it comes to greens and teals and blues, and I am not ashamed to say that, especially regarding colors like this. In person, it I feel like this is color accurate to what I was seeing. Obviously in indoor standard lighting, it's gonna come off just a touch dark, but this is a true teal in my opinion. Very smooth, very rich, and just once again, another really nice color that I could see going for a lot of your holiday manis for this time of year. Next up, we have the second new Pixie Dust for this year. This is Juniper. Described as a sparkling teal textured pixie dust shade, especially perfect when paired with leopard spots effect over the polish layered over. So this one to me has a little bit more of an opaque feeling than cookie. And I feel like it's got that super, super sparkly effect. Like I feel like this one is not just textured for the sake of being textured compared to like cookie, but it definitely has more of a sparkly type texture, if that makes sense. 
that first coat there is super, super rich and opaque. Um, I feel like going in for the second coat was just for the sake of doing it. Um, this one's definitely just really just so much more in your face than the other pixie dust in this collection. Formula overall, like I said, super opaque, very rich, and the color itself is a wondrous, just really dark, dark teal. In person, obviously it's going to come up. It's almost, I dare say, flirting with black, but I feel like what you're seeing here is what I was seeing in person. So going over it with the leopard spots coat, I'm learned at this point how to apply it. I just go over and I figured that the best way to use it was just kind of almost dry brush it over your nail and it just does its magic on its own. And here, like I said, I didn't fast forward this video at all so you guys could see essentially what it's doing in person. Here, I didn't put any top coat over it. I wanted you guys to see it both glossy and without top coat and just super flattering. It looks like crushed gems on my nails. I think it was really, really interesting and a wonderful take on, you know, the traditional old crackle polishes. Next up, we have Kateri. This is described as a beautiful midnight brown cream. Think of it as the new black. And this type of color and with that formula, I have to say this is definitely the new little black, black dress for polishes. <laughs> this color is a wonderful espresso type brown to me. And I thought even with my skin tone, I usually tend to avoid brown shades, but it just really, really flattering type brown. It's nice and cool toned. So I think those of us with warm toned skin tones, super flattering. Formula on it has that rich, super creamy feel during application. I think if you're going to go in with two coats, you'll get that nice, thick appearance on your nails. I had no issues whatsoever with the formula. It was just very, very satisfying to apply. And once again, going in with a quick dry top coat, um, no issues whatsoever. Just super glossy. I think with all the creams in this collection, you could go in with any top coat and you're going to see just overall lots of self-leveling and really nice rich formulas here we have one of the nudes in the collection this is lee described as a perfect winter nude rich and warm cream with just a hint of pink to complement any skin tone so this one was another interesting one for me i wasn't sure about it when i saw it in the bottle i do feel like the formula on this does have a bit of extra thickness to it if that makes sense that first coat, I feel like it did come off just a touch streaky, but on the second coat, I kind of just flattened out the brush as much as possible. And at that point, just be careful with going in a little too thick. There is a lot of self-leveling properties to it. So if you're going in on the second coat, just go in just a touch thinner and just trust me, it'll self-level nicely. And when you top coat, it'll hide any imperfections that you see and give you that nice plump appearance on your nails. So I did feel like for a nude that is typically, like I said, not a shade that I would reach for, I did really enjoy how this one looked on me. I think this would be a great base for any nail art um, that you could do, especially for this time of year. So personally, I would say don't be shy of this color if you have rich to medium tones like myself. Um, definitely enjoyed how it looked on me. Next up, we have Carson. This is described as a muted nude pink cream, a beautiful shade to create an understated elegance and perfect for the cold weather months. Now, this type of nude to me is definitely one I gravitate towards as uh, medium skin toned. I am warm toned, so this one I feel like was a true super super true nude for me i really enjoyed how this one looked on me the formula to it did kind of remind me of lee a little bit how it's got that little bit of extra thickness to it so you'll want to be careful on your brush strokes that first coat goes in a little bit just kind of streaky almost but be careful on the second coat go in kind of thin and you'll see the self leveling properties it'll take care of you and you'll be fine the base to me is just almost like a like a tannish nude with a bit of a rosy undertone to it. Like I said, I think this one was probably my, my favorite out of the two nudes in this set. And I think this one has a ton of versatility for if you're going to do like stamping or anything like that. And after top coat, 
like I said, the self-leveling, it'll hide any imperfections that you did during application and super smooth sailing from there. The Jubilee collection is available currently on Zoya's website. They are running a promotion right now for buy two pixie dust, get two free, which is essentially BOGO. So get in there and try out the pixie dust. I think depending on the top coat you use, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, like I said, they are one of the most types of polishes that I own in my collection. I thoroughly enjoy them and I think they also look really, really good on your toes. You can also find this Jubilee collection in major retailers such as Ulta. I will link you guys below to Zoya's website as well as my blog post if you'd like additional photos. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.